From Blue yeah. From Blue Weird. Should we talk about our new two camera format with our heads? I don't know. Be like, hey, everybody, we have a new format. Two camera format. Over here. Over here. Over there. Now we're over here. Camera one. Now we're over here. Camera two. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Isn't that a Wayne's World bit? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Trombluia. You're listening to Articulate with your hosts, Kevin Kramer and Sean Gillespie. Your go-to guys for art tips, techniques, and general artist ramblings. Presented by DrawingAndColoring.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Articulate, the show where we talk about everything art, and I'm Kevin Kramer. I'm Sean Gillespie. And today's topic is going to be... Weird surfaces. Weird surfaces. Weird surfaces. We're going to talk about painting on weird surfaces, or drawing on weird surfaces too, I guess, although I guess you wouldn't really do that so much. Which could on. I mean, if you're using mixed media, you could use like weird surfaces. And I guess when we say we're going to be talking about weird surfaces, we should point out that we're not talking about painting on wood or things like that. We're talking no. about, well, I mean, I guess we could. Well, I think that's a weird surface. That's a weird surface, but no. that's more of like a weird texture, but we're talking mainly going to be talking about odd surfaces. And this came about with a conversation I had. I, I got commissioned to do a portrait um, for this elderly gentleman in Shreveport. And he, he sent me this frame, this antique frame that I just showed you there. <laughs> All right, sorry, I'm gonna get to it. I got the tea. It's it's got a steep. I'll eat some nuts. It's got a steep. God, it's impa- you're so impatient. It's steeping, and then I'll give you some tea. All right. <laughs> but anyway, so he sent me this antique frame from like the 1920s, mm. and it's got this bubble glass. Bubble it, glass. Right? Bubble glass. That's what I'm gonna call it. I don't know what the word is for it. It's glass that bubbles out. So it's like convex. Convex. Mm-hmm. Or concave, depending on what side you're on. It's true. That's science. <laughs> yeah, that's scientific, folks. Anyway, so, and he's like, oh yeah, just, you know, put it in the frame. And I was like, all right. And I thought I would just go and buy an oval canvas. And then the frame arrives in the mail and I see that, no, I can't just fit any oval canvas or any oval thing in there. I have to paint it on... Tom (laughs) Bouillier. No, that's not. No, not yet. You're getting ahead of yourself. Damn. But I, so I took out the, I have to paint it on the, the paper that was already in there. Mm. Um, so I took it out the picture and it was a, uh, it was like, you know, I, I didn't cover over anybody else's artwork. It was kind of a, a press or something like, a, it was like, it was a cheap ass thing. Cheap there. photo. Yeah. Cheap photo with a little tear there. Old, That's great. old school cheap um, photo. Yeah. Old school cheap photo. So it was no big deal. Uh, it was not, it was like a, it wasn't even hand drawn or anything. It was, uh, yeah, I didn't even realize that you just painted over yeah. it. Yeah. So anyway, I used some gesso, painted over it. But the thing is, is like the glass, this is convex. Uh-huh. So when I do the portrait on there, if I'm not careful, the person is going to be convex or Spring. distorted. And mm. that is the problem with painting on strange surfaces. Well, how do you fix that? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> what I'm going to do, obviously, is I'm going to have to just keep an eye on it as I draw. Just keep looking at it and just I'm going to have to check on it more often. I can't just do uh, a frame by frame. Like, so here's the, the picture of the lady. And um, so normally we would just graph it out or, right. you know, yeah, however we would do it or just draw it freehand. In this case, I am going to draw it freehand as my method because it's a small enough area that I can do that. Well, could you still graph it out on there? I mean, I guess I could graph it out, but I would have to account for the distortion How do you do that? of the surface. I'm going to eyeball it. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it by eye. But Probably if you're dealing with a mural... most people did anyway. Right. That's, I mean, that's the way I'm going to do it on. in this case. I don't know just, why they would make it more difficult and make it like that anyway. Well, I think they thought it was cool back Maybe. in the day. Probably so. But, but if I was doing a mural, a large mural then you would have to account for it up there as well. Right. And that's when it gets more complicated. So you can't just use a projector and project that straight on there. No, because it'll be distorted. Like, so the ear will be like, this ear will be really long. And if it's not perfectly right. centered, this one will be, you know, so it'll be distorted. So then mm-hmm. what if you took that photo, scanned it in the Photoshop and bowed it in? Now, if you did that, that would work, but you would have to bow it at exactly the same proportions and the same rate as the Mm. actual image itself. Now, that would be tough. Now, what you probably could do is, if you're fancy enough with Photoshop, you could 
scan <laughs> an image of this, uh, especially if it was, uh, if you could tell that it was bowed, mm. and then like or take a photo of it to where you could see the curvature of it, and right. then take the image itself and then put it on to the surface and then project that on there. That mm, might work. Maybe. Uh, but that would be hard. <laughs> that, <laughs> that seems a, very intense. It's going to be a lot easier for me just to eyeball it in this case. Right. And so then, you'll be s- s- painting and stepping back a lot. Yeah, I'm going to be stepping back a whole lot. A That's whole lot. probably But with murals, you do end up with it because not only do you have the distortion of the surface itself that causes a problem, but also your location on it. So right. if you draw up here... <laughs> And then you're right there on it, and you're trying to freehand it. By the time you step back, right. it's, it's going to be like a much, a, like yeah, a pinched, really elongated, yeah, pinched nose so it's or be something. Totally distorted. So that's part of the problem. And then, as you know, there's also an effect where they use this to our advantage called what's that? Trombolier. <laughs> Trombolier. 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 It's Trombolier. It's French. You know. Yeah, we looked up how to say it because I've. It's one of those words that you. Uh, you only see in writing, <laughs> and, right? And then you don't really hear a lot of people say these days "trompe l'oeil." But "trompe l'oeil" is the effect of making something look real when it's mm. really a wall. So, oh, like, yeah. or if, even like those chalk on the ground, right? That can be "trompe l'oeil" as well, right? <laughs> so, what you're talking about is making a surface that may be distorted or whatever look like it's flat but going into thing and it's all about perspective a lot of times with a trompe l'oeil effect what you'll do is, is a one point perspective so a one point perspective right. is going to give you like foreshortening and all right. that and it's going to have it all going in so that if you stand in just the right place it looks like that's really gives it depth you know right. it looks like it's going away and so yeah. that's what trompe l'oeil is and they used to use that in like castles and stuff mm-hmm. and make dark areas look like really nice right. doors with right. light shining out around right. them and stuff like that yeah and that's i don't know why they did that uh too because it looks awesome I guess. <laughs> makes yeah. your castle look bigger it looks a lot <laughs> nicer and magical adds depth to the castle it does but and so you can also implement that in um thing in, in like ceilings like in the sistine chapel for example it was curving so michelangelo had to use foreshortening and trompe l'oeil mm. to make it look like you were looking up at these characters who were on this curved surface hmm. i see that was probably a real pain in the ass <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's no way yeah well with fresco especially you only had like seven hours to fill right? it in which i mean he did cartoons uh you know life-size cartoons on paper so cartoon the word cartoon doesn't come from looney tunes <laughs> it mm-hmm. actually no <laughs> although looney tunes are awesome Chuck Jones, Michael Matisse, Ken mm. Harris. These guys are among my favorite. These are a few of my favorite things. Ah. I love this guy. Anyway, but no, the cartoon actually comes from, uh, you know, writing on the paper uh, back in the day, you know, for the mural. So they would create a cartoon hmm. uh, of the image. Well, what about a Nickelodeon? Is it the same thing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He says it in Titanic. I assume it's old. Oh, do they? I don't know. I haven't seen Titanic. I... He says Nickelodeon. Yeah, I saw this in a Nickelodeon once. I saw this in a Nickelodeon. And then he, he kisses, like, the hand. Huh. This guy, that, I mean, that's a cartoon. A Nickelodeon's a cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you bringing up shit you don't know anything about? I, I don't thought know. you were going to give me a pearl there. That was the pearl. <laughs> that was the pearl. <laughs> it was used. The pearl was... A Nicolo- is Nickelodeon the, a cartoon? You, the pearl was the... It was a DiCaprio question. DiCaprio said something about a Nickelodeon in a It was a, a question more than a statement. <laughs> It was a question more than a statement. Well, I don't know. Well, now i got to look it up. See, crying. you don't know it. I don't know. And then that. All right. So you go ahead and tell them more about Trompe l'oeil. Trompe l'oeil. Trompe l'oeil. Well, I'll look up this Nickelodeon business because we're going to get to the bottom of this. Well, let's... <laughs> it's, the chalk outlines and all those drawings and things that you see online, those are like the, the more modern form. You don't see them painted really on walls anymore too right. much. Right. Well, no, I mean... And they're always usually in some kind of crazy canyon or a shark coming out of the ground and something crazy yeah yeah and then they're and they're basically using the trompe l'oeil effect to their advantage uh, right you know they're they're and creating pers- illusions perspective yeah. all of that but yeah so nickelodeon is a movie theater oh that's right i knew that nickelodeon mm. was a you'd pay a nickel and you'd you're see so, the movie you're so disgusted <laughs> i am because i knew that i knew that i knew that too i think yeah you pay a nickel and you go in and you see the movie it's a, a nickel- nickelodeon yeah. Where's the Lodian come from? Man, because it's awesome sounding. Getting you, off track it was with called the weird... Nickel Theater, that suck. People are like, I don't want to go to the Nickelodeon. Nickel Theater? <laughs> yeah, anyway. All right. Side weird track. surfaces. Weird surfaces. So that, I would, 
you don't want to include the the pottery and wood and all of that, but I think that those are weird surfaces. Well, They're not are, traditional. Right, no, and then depending on the surface, you have to prep uh, different ways. For example, I once tried to, a friend of mine had a hard hat, and I was in airbrushing a little bit, and he wanted me to airbrush flames on his hard hat. Hmm. Which sounds very easy. <laughs> no, not, not to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it should be easy. The, the painting of it is very easy. Hmm. But the getting it to stick to this hmm. hard hat was almost impossible. I tried to scour it you yeah, know, a little sand bit. It. Yeah, sand it with some sandpaper, rough it up, rough it up the edges, and then hit it with some primer. Didn't do it. Didn't work. All flaked right off. I mean, this stuff, this hard hmm. hat was not your usual hard hat. It was made out of unstickable plastic from the government i don't know it was i I couldn't get anything to stick to it wouldn't you have to like put a coat of like a finish coat over it first after like a primer no you like you can scour it paint it then you have to seal it maybe but i mean it didn't even like the paint wouldn't even stick it would just it would just like yeah i mean well it would just like stay wet as soon as it dried it would just flake right off it was like yeah it was just nothing would stick to this plastic i don't know like even though I tried priming it, couldn't, hmm. wouldn't do it. I'm sure there's a way. I just never found out, and yeah. I gave up, and I gave him back his ruined hard hat. <laughs> I'm like, I will buy you another one because I ruined this. Wow. So definitely research your surface. Yes. Uh, one thing I got hired once to paint the bottom of a swimming pool, hmm. and that requires a specialty paint too. You have to use like a concrete paint that right. won't, you know, that like, you can get wet. <laughs> and it right. Won't. Well, there's yeah. there's like a pool swimming pool paint. <laughs> that well, it's more like use. concrete. I would think. Like the stuff they would use in um, like a, a garage. Is that not the same kind of paint? I think it's a different. Like you roll it out and you get it. Yeah, because that gets smooth. I yeah. can't imagine you use the same paint. Mm-mm. Maybe yeah, it's, it's more gotta like be. that fresco. Yeah, it's got to be a, a different type of paint. And you have to wait until it completely dries before you put the water in. Because <laughs> swimming in a brown, <laughs> yeah, you'll be murky just, color you're swimming water. Swimming in paint. That's no good for anybody. Mm-mm. That's no good for anybody. Don't want to accidentally take a gulp of that. Nope. Because you go straight down. I like this, this new sound. You go straight down. Spilling tea still, man. Yeah, you get it. Well, you can upgrade. <sighs> I got to talk with one hand and not the other or something. I don't know. I don't know, man. You can upgrade the equipment, but you cannot upgrade the... The Shano. You can never upgrade the Shano. There you go. He's old school. All right. <laughs> so what are some other... Wood? A lot of times, actually, people think that they used to paint on canvas. But before canvas, they would paint just right on wood. Linen, wood... Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's really the main, yeah, the main thing. Yeah. And wood, brick, maybe. One thing that people are starting to paint on, too, now is um, drywall. Hmm. People are buying sheets of drywall, cutting it out, and just painting on it, because it's basically paper held together with chalky, you know, Right, brick but risk. that doesn't seem very sustainable. It's not. <laughs> or but cheap. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is cheap. That's I think that's why they're doing it. Because drywall, I mean, you get like eight foot by eight foot for, you know. Well, I can go get a piece of plywood, though. Yeah, plywood might be cheaper. A lot of people get old doors, paint murals, and or paint pictures yeah, on old that's doors. that's another one. Uh, like the, there you go, Audrey Kawasaki. You ever heard of her? Mm-mm. She's really big in L.A. She does um, dreamy-like girls that are kind of like sexual looking. We might need a picture of that added to this podcast because we'll put a link that in description bottom. was... They are always... They have, like, a girl that's always just kind of staring either seductively or... There's been some controversy with that. Okay, cause it's but like, they're, like, little... Puts women in a, in a weird area or, or a weird Or are they picture. Little, little girls or what are we, what are we talking about here? <laughs> no, they're not little girls. They're, they're, it's they're, L.A., you know. <laughs> they're mature... They're of age. But they're all the same person. They're always the same girl in her okay. in her images. But she paints on birch. Birch? Okay. And a lot of the wood grain is shown through. And a lot of people have copied it, or she might have pulled a few things together, too. Right. But that just that aesthetic alone makes... It changes the entire picture So itself. the surface is part of her style. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's an artist here in uh, Austin that does a similar thing. He uses a... Uh, Fence post boards. Uh, I think we saw them at um, Kirby Lane the other day. Hmm. But he uses fence post boards and sticks, you know, nails them together, and then he uses. Um, it's. I mean, it's basically a template system, kind of like um, 
Banksy uses, you know, oh, except right. he uses multiple layer templates so hmm. that he has one and, you know, it's the under template and then he does another one where it's got the white lining and then another one will be uh, like the highlights. Okay. And you. so it's like a three or four layer Layered. template. Um, but so he's got the same image repeated on all these different posts. So it's almost like screen printing with stencils. Yeah, it's basically, yeah, stencil printing, uh, you know, graffiti basically, hmm. but it's on post, but it's in a way that he can cut it out and sell it, you know, to Interesting. restaurants and things like that. So it, it's, you know, it's an interesting cool. effect. But what he paints, you know, is it's the material itself obviously give, lends itself to a rustic aesthetic. So he paints right. uh, Native Americans hmm. on there, which makes sense because, right. like, you know. So a lot of times, yeah, the, the surface that you are painting yeah. on will dictate the style or the, you know, I'd say what almost paint. all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's always, that's like one of the first things you pick to display any of the work is what am I going to do it on? Something that's rough, smooth? Yeah, I mean, it's a choice, an early right. on choice for sure. But I, I, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of room for... A lot of them aren't sold in art stores, though. They yeah. just kind of, I'm going to rip the sofa cushion off and I'm going to paint on that. Right. That kind of stuff. I don't really right. care for that, but... Yeah, that's not your thing? <laughs> that's not my... The sofa cushion painting? I'm not, not really into those. I don't know. A little too rough for me. A little too rugged. Really? What about the, the, the old saw? Painting on the saw at the uh, mm. country store. <laughs> no. You ever seen that one? I think I have. I don't yeah, it's always I... like a little windmill up there and the rustic thing and it's like some, some old timey saw and you're like, I'll have the frog legs please. You know? No, I'm not a fan. I'm thinking of, that. of a particular restaurant. Clearly, in <laughs> clearly, yeah, it's got like this painted saw up there, and you know, it's it's nice. I guess I don't know. I don't know if it's art. <laughs> well, I think Folk that's, art. I think that's a good place to end. All right. Which is <laughs> All right. Anyway, so odd surfaces can definitely cause trouble, but that does not. It's not a deal breaker. Right. You, you got to work around. That's right. what I'm going to do here. You know, it's, it's it really dictates. I'm going to have to work around. It dictates the end product for sure. Well, and it definitely does. It's definitely going to change it. Obviously, now I'm going to try to make this painting when I do it. It's going to look a little bit more 1920s. I'm going to create a background that looks more toward the era of right. this picture itself. Right. Um, as opposed to just copying the image itself. Exactly. So, I mean, there's going to be, you know, like you said, uh, the the... It will dictate the outcome. Yeah, yeah. The a outcome. lot of times the, the final surface product. dictates it. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. We'll yeah. see. We'll right. see how it turns out. Yeah. Who can know? What is, uh, that's a good question for, what is your favorite weird surface to paint on or draw on or create art? Well, What's the weirdest surface? That's what we, that's what I want to hear. What's the weirdest surface? Weirdest surface I've ever painted on was a girl's back. She was topless. What's the weirdest surface you've ever painted on? Ugh. I don't. I don't paint. And the weirdest I've drawn. Oh, drawn on. Okay. Um, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really go off into too many things. Man, not a lot you can draw on. Really. No. Chalk. Probably. Chalk. You done chalk on something weird? No. Oh, man. The homework ground. assignment for Kevin. He's gonna go Clearly. draw on something weird this week. What's the weirdest surface y'all have drawn on? Let us know. I want to know. Let us know. And as always, the best conversations happen articulatepodcast.com oh i didn't know that in the comments so head on over there hit the subscribe button on youtube or the best out of what out of all of them out of the internet that's where they all start the best on the internet they all start right okay. there okay always best on in the, the internet apparently. voted by kevin go over there leave a comment let us know what you think and we'll see you next week see you next week You've been listening to Articulate with Kevin and Sean. Subscribe on iTunes or check them out on drawingandcoloring.com. Always reminding you to keep it simple.